Welcome everybody to Forgotten Coast Fishing. My name's David and I fish inshore and offshore showing you what I do to find and catch fish. If that sounds appealing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss my future videos. Here we are late March in the panhandle of Florida. Our spring is kind of getting a slow start this year. We've had some persistent cold fronts that keep coming through. They kind of keep our water temperature from rising. But we've had some nice warm days, so we're gonna get out on this bay, see if we can't get some trout, redfish, or Spanish mackerel. I'm gonna start out with a topwater today. I've got this Miralore Top Dog Junior. Topwaters can be very effective in the morning like this. You've got some calmer water, low light situation. I've got a setup on a drift here. We're in about six feet of water and that's gonna slowly rise up to some grass flats this way. But I like this area, it's got a lot of grass, but also over here it's got some deep water. So if those fish are still kind of going to the deep water when it's cool at night, and then in the afternoons or in the day when it, when it warms up, they'll move off to the flat. So if they're still kind of in that pattern, you know, I wanted to find a place that had that deep water for them and then as well as the nice grass. That was a big fish. I think that was a big red fish. Man, he just didn't grab it. Let's see if we can get him again. That was a big redfish. Unfortunately, we didn't get that redfish on that top water. He was a he was a nice one. Sun's kind of starting to come up, starting to get a little warmer. I've kind of reset my drift, and I'm going to switch to this popping cork setup. At the end, I've got this voodoo shrimp, and this is 20 pound fluorocarbon right here, 15 pound braid. This is a seven foot six TFO medium rod. And this is a Okuma Simar C40 reel. Oh, oh, I got him. All right, here he is. Oh man. All right. Voodoo shrimp on the popping cork. Looks like a trout. All right. All right, we're in real close to the shore here. And I was hoping we would catch some redfish over here, but it looks like we're getting a trout. A nice trout at that. A very nice trout from what I can tell so far. All right. First fish of the day. Let's see if we can get him landed. Yep, nice trout, nice trout, nice trout. Oh man, I'm not gonna mess with the net. Let's just get this dude on board. Check him out, everybody. Nice speckled trout on this popping cork and voodoo shrimp. Man, let's get a measurement on him. All right. Now in my part of Florida, they have to be 15 to 19 and you can keep one over 19. Well, let's see what this guy measures out. This is a total length fish, so pinch the tail, get that at zero and he's 19. All right, so right on the dot 19, if he was over, this would count as our one fish over 19. But we get to keep three total, so let's get this guy in the box. All right, so I've got to reset my drift we kind of caught that trout in this area about right here. You can see we've got some points here and here. So I'm gonna reset my drift kind of over here a little bit and kind of maybe get a little closer to this point. We have a rising tide, so that water is gonna be kind of pushing over to those points and kind of on either side of it. So we might have some fish kind of staging over here and that's maybe where why we got that trout over there. We'll see, but you can see the bottom that we have here kind of some grass and sand spots mixed in that's what i'm always looking for and this is a good depth this is about three feet right here the other thing that's going on that i think helped us catch that trout or help us locate it anyway you can see off in the distance there's mullet jumping over there i saw a stingray earlier so we're starting to kind of see some life and that kind of thing so you know usually if you find some mullet you know, you can usually find some trout and redfish. Oh, got him. Oh yeah, oh, here's a good one. Oh, here's a good one. I thought I had the bottom first because it didn't move. I don't know what we've got here, but I literally thought I had the bottom at first. Man, oh man. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I couldn't see it. I didn't really see it when it came to the surface. Oh man, 
what have we got here yeah i thought well man i just snagged the bottom because it didn't move but then it started swimming said oh man i've got a fish a nice one all right taking out some good drag too all right i think we'll try to net this one i'm gonna tighten up this drag just a touch just taking it out a little too easy this is a kind of a medium light rod and this is a pin 2500 reel forget the name brand i'll tell you in a minute i think i've got a redfish here all right harry watch out all right man this is a good fish it's on light tackle so it's going to feel a little heavier oh, there's another one with it but he's a nice one he's going to be a keeper man i'm glad i switched to that slam shady z-man i was wondering if they were just kind of more on the bottom since they didn't hit that top water and then didn't hit the popping cork look at that fish right there that's a good one it's a good one all right come on redfish now i don't like when he starts circling the boat like this i don't try to steer them around the other way i'm afraid too much when they're shallow like this it's gonna kind of pop that lure out if it changes directions so i'm just going to kind of let him kind of dictate where we're going here watch the shore we don't want to run into land but that'll be a small price to pay if we get this guy in oh come on redfish yeah hey, look at him trying to go down even though he's in two or three feet of water there's our net here all right all right he's getting tired all right yeah come this way to the redfish all right all right let's see if we can get this dude up without losing him yes we got him in the net oh man he's bigger than i thought look at this i can't even get him up one hand oh man this is a big redfish man he may be too big to keep all right man he's a lot bigger than i thought a lot bigger than i thought man a lot Oh, he's biting the net. Y'all check this redfish out. He's 28 inches, so he's got to go back. But a nice, fun fish to catch. Look at him. Two spots on each side. Well, man, I'm excited for that. Good day. Good day so far. Let's go ahead and get this guy back in the water. All right. There he goes. All right. Well, man, in our part of Florida, redfish to keep have to be between 18 and 27. He was 28, so we had to let him back, but that's okay. That was a fun fish to catch. Before I move, I wanted to show you where I caught him. This is that point I've been showing you quite a bit. There's that other one I keep showing. This is where it kind of juts back into the shore over there, kind of like a little cove, I guess. And that's where I caught that trout. A little bit to the right of that is where I hooked up to that larger redfish first thing. So he came right about where we're sitting, I think, um, just off of this point. So this little area has been real productive. And I think it's because we have a rising tide and it's just pushing water onto this point and just filtering that water over to either side. So you've just got some fish, I think, roaming around it, looking for those shrimp, bait fish and that kind of thing as it gets washed over it all right while i'm getting things set up again i wanted to kind of show you what i was using to get that redfish this paddle tail this is a z-man scented paddler z in the slam shady color and this jig head this is a texas eye z-man jig head it's a weedless style so you can see you can get that that hook right up next to the to the paddle tail and you know the weeds are less likely to grab it you could also kind of push it back a little bit and kind of bury that hook just slightly you know when that fish bites it he's going to grab it like that and it's going to hook him and then the scent i was using this is a pro cure inshore saltwater sort of flavor i guess you call it and i'm just kind of sticking this on there's z-man has these a lot of these paddle tails have these slits in the bottom where you start your hook a lot of times i'll stick it in that groove right there i think maybe that just holds a little better and any kind of groove in there you can find 
will work too and just kind of spread it around a little bit and every i don't know five six cast or something you can put some more scent on it but that's what i was using very effective for redfish obviously and speckled trout will grab that as well so i've positioned myself again for a drift kind of in the same area i don't really see a reason to move just yet we're catching fish pretty much on every drift and then the gear i was using this is a seven foot medium light rod and this is a pin clash 2 2500 and i've got 15 pound power pro braid on it and that was a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader oh got him got him got him got him got him all right man i thought it was pinfish and they were just kind of just kind of messing with it oh what have we got here this is not a trout puffer fish yeah we got a puffer fish check him out everybody now maybe he'll puff up for us these are the slimiest guys there he goes check him out he's puffing up for us it's he does it like a pump he's like hum, 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 and he pumps up check him out these are the funniest guys look at him little bitty eyes right there at the top when he's all blown up looks so funny all right let's see if we can get him off what do you think of this one harry look at that that's a strange one huh there he goes check him in flighting yeah, he's just like a pup look at that that's funny he's like shomp, 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 and he pump and he's pumping himself of air oh man check out those teeth look how he's grinding his teeth there look at him so funny with those little eyes up at the top like that all right we got to let him get back but he is a unique i can't even hold him he's so slimy they're like holding a slimy balloon man check him out nice little puffer fish let's see what happens when he goes in the water deflated getting rid of that water or air there he goes oh man oh man did you see that this lure hit the water and then he was there man man that was something i don't think i've ever had a fish hit it that fast i mean it's like right when that hit the water and you see there's some kind of ripples behind it i think it's some kind of bait fish back there oh man we've got another good one man that was that was crazy oh man is this our keeper redfish or just a big trout it's a redfish of some sort oh man looked like there was something else with him i thought for a second maybe it was a shark but wow that's just crazy i've never had a lure oh look at all those fish right there look at them all look at them all seeing what's going on wow those are big trout man those are big trout right there everybody man i hope that could come on film there was look there's a stingray and everything man there was like five nice sized trout swimming next to whatever i've got here look they're right there again oh that's crazy look at them right there oh man i hope you can see that look at those trout they don't even know i'm here wow man is that my redfish right there yeah that's him right there i think he's gonna be a keeper man maybe that was redfish i couldn't tell but there was at least four or five of them just kind of seeing what was going on oh man yeah come this way redfish because i've got my rod on this side look at this redfish in this clear water everybody man so cool so cool come on redfish don't get off the hook all right man look at him oh he's just trying to get away i'm trying to baby him in too i think he's hooked good but you never know he's definitely smaller than the other one but let's see if we can get him in successfully look at him right there man he's a good one too all right like i said this is a medium light rod oh turn his head oh i got him wow i got him man these are some good redfish this dude may be right on the nose 27 i don't know he may be bigger than that wow man 
that is something else there was a lot of them this same size next to him too yeah he may be right on the nose 27 check him out good sun shot too well let's see if we're keeping them or whether we need to throw them back man i told you he was right on the dot 27 look at that oh man with like a 16th inch to spare can you see that it's in the shade but got his nose right on the zero and there's the 27 mark right there he is just under this is about the biggest redfish you can keep since he was just about a 16th of an inch under 27 27 or above we'd have to throw him back just like that other one all right well, let's get this guy in the box all right since we got our one keeper redfish i'm going to go ahead and head out to a little bit deeper flats where hopefully we can pick up our last two keeper trout and we'll see you there All right, so we moved back to a kind of a spot where we've got a good bit of grass flats this way and a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna go back to this voodoo shrimp with this popping cork, see if we can't get those two keeper trout. Oh, here we go. All right, man, I casted, this is a fish that I casted to a spot and got. See those two sand spots right there? And there's, it looks like it's deeper in the middle. I casted right into that and sure enough here was this trout I don't think he's going to be a keeper but man it feels really good when you kind of have a little bit of a plan or an idea and it works out but yeah he's too short but this was the first trout here in this new area so excited about that let's get this guy off I'm not even going to measure him let's just go ahead and get him back in the water so yeah there you go this is where he was caught right here and you can maybe see that it's a little bit darker and i casted just next to that sand spot so when you're fishing for trout always look for those deeper holes all right i'm gonna go ahead and head on back so we've got some time to clean those fish but we're gonna cook up that redfish i've got a little bit different way to prepare it i want to show you but where we found our fish today we found those grass flats that had a deeper channel next to it we saw some signs of life like the jumping mullet, some stingray, pinfish, that kind of thing. Once I moved over to a grass flats that really didn't have that channel next to it, I really didn't see any mullet jumping out anymore and that kind of thing, and, and we really didn't catch any fish. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get the boat put back together and we'll see you at the cleaning table. I'm going to go ahead and clean the easier of the two fish, the speckled trout, and we're going to use this Sword 7 inch flex knife. These are great fillet knives. I'll leave a link down in the description so you can grab one for yourself. So really the first step is just go behind the gills, kind of make your cut right down to the backbone, down to the belly. Then what I do, I go ahead and do a shallow cut. And then what I do is I go ahead and pull these innards out, making most sure that I get this swim bladder out. It's gonna be real tough to clean if you've got this in this way because it doesn't really cut very well. Then once you've got that out of the way, go ahead and get your knife down to the backbone, kind of turn it, and you're just gonna go ahead and just follow the backbone and go all the way through the tail. You see these rib cavity right here? Just go on the other side of that, kind of at an angle, following the angle of those bones, and just cut that section out right there. Then to get this skin off, I just kind of get it as close to the border as I can, get a good hold on the, on the tail end, and just start your knife and just hover just on top of that skin. I like to follow with my left hand like you guys have seen me do before. It holds the filet down to the table nicely, and you can kind of tell if you're leaving too much flesh on there or too little and that kind of thing. And really, that's all you have to do for a speckled trout. Just kind of go through and feel if there's any bones. There may be a couple right here. 
that you want to kind of trim out and that is literally it and we're just going to do the same thing for the other side okay now for this redfish redfish are a good bit tougher than speckled trout especially big ones like this you're almost going to kind of clean it like you do a red snapper so your first step is to go ahead and do this cut behind the fins and you can kind of find your knife in between the scales if you want to i usually kind of make a little puncture and then it's easier to kind of get your cut going that way and then you can start where you made your puncture and just go all the way up to the head then once you have this cut done i like to start about this spot right here where the tail meets the body go ahead and, and get your knife started now you're just doing a shallow cut like i said this is kind of like a red snapper or grouper or, or big offshore type fish and just make that superficial cut just through the skin going all the way up to where you made that first cut all right once you have that you can kind of start to remove this flesh from these bones and just kind of slowly try to keep that knife parallel to those bones once you kind of start to kind of make an opening you can get your finger in there and kind of see how you're doing and you see these bones right there that's what you're kind of hovering on top of right there and just let that knife just kind of do the cutting for you don't don't try to force it till you get to the backbone and once you get to the backbone you can get your knife just lay it over top of the backbone and go all the way to the belly and then you can just cut the underside of it all the way to the tail like that all right so the next step is is actually probably one of the hardest parts you just kind of have to take your knife and roll it over these rib cages that you're going to kind of start to fill as you kind of work your knife in here so there again your knife will kind of let you know where it wants to go if you just kind of take it easy and and rest that knife on top of the bones so i'm just letting my knife just kind of rest on top of these bones the knife will kind of find those bones and then once you get it to about this spot where you can kind of see the back of the skin right here you can go ahead and take your knife and just kind of go through that skin right on top of these rib bones right here and just follow that all the way down like that now this is all ribs right here you can see kind of hear them right there so you can see when you hold the fish up like this you can see how you have to kind of go up and over and that like i said that's a hard spot to kind of get that flesh off all right i'm going to leave this skin on this redfish as opposed to taking it off like i did with the speckled trout and the reason is is we're going to smoke this and you know redfish have really thick hard scales and that's almost going to kind of be like a built-in protector of the meat so you won't really have to flip it it's just going to smoke with this skin side down so I'm going to go ahead and get this other filet off the redfish. Tomorrow's Easter, so we're going to be smoking this tomorrow for our Easter lunch. The first step in smoking this redfish is you want to brine the fish. And I've already done that. I made a mixture with two quarts of water, a cup of salt, and a cup of brown sugar. Put that in a bag and let that sit in the refrigerator for six hours. I've taken that out. I patted it real dry with a paper towels and set it on a sheet tray uncovered in the refrigerator to get it even more dry because you want that fish as dry as possible when you smoke it. And I'm gonna smoke it on this bullet style charcoal smoker. All right, to get that smoker prepared, I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. So it has a tray at the bottom to collect all the ashes from the charcoal and then a grate that sits on top of that that you're actually gonna put the charcoal on. And then I'm gonna set the water tray on top of that. I'm gonna get that charcoal lit and let that ash over and then I'm going to add the apple wood chips on top of that charcoal that's going to create that great smoke. I'm going to add that fish and I'm going to try to keep the smoker somewhere around 200 degrees while that fish is cooking. And then I'm going to check the fish probably at about the hour mark just to see where we are. All right, so now that we've got a good smoke going, let's go ahead and get this fish on here. All right, so we'll just let that go. I'm going to kind of check on it periodically just to kind of see how the fish is going as well as try to keep that smoker at 200 degrees. All right, so our redfish is done. It took right about two hours, and I was holding that temperature in the smoker at about 200 to about 250 degrees. And we got an internal temperature of about 150 for both fillets. So check it out. 
we have some nice golden brown redfish fillets. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off and get them inside. This is gonna be our main dish for our Easter dinner tonight. We've got some dinner rolls and mashed potatoes and green beans to go along with it. So it's gonna make a great dinner. And I'll leave this recipe down in the description so you can make it for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss my future videos. So until next time, hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.